everyone and welcome to Special Envoyé. I am Daphne. Well, did you know how many immigrants are there in France in 2021? According to the INSEE, which defines migrants as those born abroad, in 2021, this group comprised 6.96 million people, which is 10.3% of the population. And if descendants of migrants are taken into account, it's 21.7%. And did you know how many people speak French in the world in 2020? Well, although France has a population of only 76 million people, French is spoken by more than 274 million people in the world. Are you sure about that? Yeah, keep going. Okay. Well, French is used as an official language in 55 countries, which is like Cameroon, Senegal, or even Haiti. But we traveled the world to find the best guests and we interviewed millions of people but only kept the four best ones. So back to you and you're going to be so interested. It's going to be fascinating. My name is Gabriel, Gabriel the two, and I'm 37 years old. I'm American, Cameroon and also French. And my name is Ellen Wasalina. I am originally from Oakland, California. I grew up with parents speaking different languages, so my native language is English. I'm Sarah, I'm 21, and I'm from Spain. My name is Dominika, I'm 22 years old. Um, I am from Lithuania. I came to Sweden in 2013, so I've been living in Sweden since. And then I came to France for four months in uh, 2021, uh, February. The first time I came to France, well, I was 12, but I spent some time living as a university student. But then I really came to settle in 1986. So I started in Paris because I think, you know, when, once you come to France, you come to Paris. I arrived in France a long time ago. Maybe you were not born yet. It was in 1999. That's a very good question. Um, I would say I belong to wherever my family is, because especially like now I'm studying at a place where I have no connection to except with university, you know? And whenever I go back to Lithuania, I feel like I don't really belong there really. Even if I understand what everyone is saying, I have all these people that I've grown up with, you know? But still, wherever my family is would be where I consider my home to be. I have been in France longer than I have in the United States. I feel very much at home in France. It's my home. It's my office. It's my world. It's where I raised my family. It's where I did most of my career. So I, I have a heart in me that's American, but it's also German and Ukrainian. And I missed France when I went back recently to Washington and I realized all the nice things that I liked about France. And so I was so happy to come back. <laughs> my native language is Spanish and I do feel like I belong to my country, which is Spain. And uh, speaking Spanish is the language I feel more comfortable and more me uh, than in every other language. When I was a kid, I was missing Africa all the time. I was missing the comfort. I was missing the good life. I felt like I was trapped in France, like I was here by default. I never asked to come here. So I was like, no, but actually I'm a free man. I can choose where to go. So I tried to go in multiple countries and I always end up coming back here. So at some point I end up telling myself like, what the hell? So maybe actually I'm more French than I'm thinking. So when I had to build my house, I was building my house, not far from myself, I fit because in my head, my first symbol of home and shelter and success was Maison Lafitte. So like it or not, your taste tells a lot about you. I started very early. First of all, my mother taught us German at home. And then I started to learn French because I said, mom, I really want to learn French. I was very interested in fashion. I said, oh, it's my dream to go to France and live in France. So, so I was about 14 maybe. And then um, of course I, learned French. I later on took a minor in French with my bachelor's studies at the university level. So, but then in between, I was going to Europe every year. Um, and my mother sent me to, for example, to Brussels to live with um, a German family. So I was able to go every summer and perfect my French, which became quickly better than my German. So I was perfectly trilingual actually at the time. Well, I started learning French um, a few years ago when I was at high school. 
and then I continued on my own and then I came here but I still don't be really fluent at it I learned French in school we had both language in Cameroon we are we have double language French and English are both official language so I grew up learning French but I learned African French not Francais Francais so I learned the, the accent with the sentence with the joke so it's completely different language trust me so Swedish I kind of didn't have a choice in learning I had like one-on-one -on -one with the teacher because no one else was foreigner like me so that was quite nice so I learned a lot there and then I had friends that were like very kind of pushy but in a nice way to speak Swedish with me and I was very comfortable with them and so I started speaking to them and that's how I think I developed even more and uh, for French that's actually a very very long relationship I have with French because I was like maybe 11 when I started learning it and I started because my mom was learning it before and she was like oh you should learn French as well it's such a beautiful language so I started it then and then it's been very on and off of course when I came uh, last year to do my exchange in France then I took uh, French classes at the university and then I was finally able to feel like I'm learning something even if I didn't become comfortable speaking it but I gained like a lot more like understanding of like regular conversations so yeah. I try to speak French whenever I can however at school, I do speak English the most because we are in a, the international class, so it's easier for me in a way. Well, I'll start with my family first. I raised my boys in France, so I spoke English to them and their dad spoke French to them. I'm fully bilingual, so I can switch back and forth. If I see somebody knows French, I speak French to them and they're not going to speak English to me because I speak very good French. <laughs> and then if I see there's somebody that speaks English, I'm going to speak English to them when I know they don't speak French. For writing, I think because of the fact that I did two masters in France in French, I'm more comfortable, believe it or not, Mathilde, writing in French at a very high level. Even in French, in English. I work in English, it's better. And I, I even speak English to French people. If you don't know I speak French, I don't switch. I stay in English. Because the perception of a black man who speaks French reminds them French colonies. When you speak English, only think about two things. Either he's American, which is my case, or he's basically a smart black person. Either way, when you speak in English, people tend to give you higher standards. You can be like Will Smith, uh, Vin Diesel, or whatever crap, but when you speak in English, they have American symbol. When you speak French, you look like either an athlete, sport player, no brain in their head, or basically from the ghetto. So I don't know why, but my brain switched a long time ago, and I chose to only speak in English when I can. With my close friends, we mostly speak in English because we all went to school in English. I choose not to speak a single word to my kids in French. In the house, she knows mom speaks Slovak and papa speaks English. And then she's speaking French with everybody else in the area. Because if I speak French with her, then she won't speak English anymore. Because she will speak French to me and Slovak to her mom and she will forget about English. When I travel, I speak French because people love Francais. So when I travel, I speak French. Um, we can get into some intercultural uh, matters. As you know, I'm teaching a course in intercultural communication. And the perception of English or English speaking people are that they don't speak any other language. The, the perception of, of, of languages, I think is, how and what situation you would be in and how you would use them. Interpreting comes, you know, when you, when you speak of different languages, as you know, there's different contexts to different language. And when I speak English, I speak in another way um, because of the vocabulary, it's more of a direct speak, right? Um, and so it would be interpreted as more of a direct sort of contact. Whereas you speak French, 
It's a little bit more, as we say in French, enrobé. There's the politesse, you know, there's sophistication. I would almost say to, you can't just say oui et non. You have to explain why. I always say, if you learn a language, learn the culture, understand the people, understand the history. I do think that the meaning of the words you're saying goes deeper in your own language than in any other language. I find it easy to say, I love you in English. And in French, it's so heavy in French. I cannot even say it. I cannot even say it on camera. There are some words like that, some emotion who goes better in one language. So perception for me is like what you kind of yourself see and hear. But interpretation is more like you go beyond what you just see or hear, you know? You're using kind of your cultural knowledge or any factual knowledge that you have, you know, and then you connect what someone told you, for example, with what beliefs you yourself carry on. Perception is based on non-verbal communication. Perception is basically what you try to set up when you create the message. And when you receive it, the person, you have to decode what you tell him and interpret, translate your words. The language put me in conflict all the time. That's where you found out that even if we speak multiple language or the same language in multiple country, you only speak your language, your individual language, like yourself give meaning to words. For example, I can say back off, okay? Depending how me, myself, interpret back off, it can be just please let me alone or get the fuck out of here. But this part is me in my head who define this part. So because I have multiple culture, somehow my French kind of changed. So basically now uh, I had to basically make sure that I understand the other person before I speak. Not a conflict, but yes, um, I have lived a misunderstanding for sure. And it's really awkward when you are trying to say one thing, even if it's grammatically correctly said, and it doesn't have the same meaning that you want to express, it makes you feel really bad and really awkward at some point, because uh, it's just something cultural or something that you're trying to express, but you can't, because you don't have the, the same culture or the same uh, uh, jokes. The only thing that comes to my mind is that when people don't uh, speak that well English, if I make a joke about something, of course it's not funny, you know, and then because they don't, they don't um, have the same understanding of, of, for me, of how the language works and stuff. So sometimes like there is this, you know, like a bit confusion because I say something and the other person like interprets it completely differently, you know. Every single day you need to, I need to actually like, let's say, tailor my language not to fall into, uh, into conflict. When you go overseas and they ask you, sir, what do you think of the Russian conflict, for example? In English, it's a straightforward language. You will say pros and cons. In French, it's thèse, antithèse, synthèse. And so I responded to them as a French person. So I didn't say I'm in favor. I didn't say I'm against. I just told them like, why it makes sense this way, why it made that way. And then I even play with the grammar to respond as a French person so I can get out of it. I definitely and sadly do that I change depending on what uh, language I'm speaking. I think that with the time I'm getting my English personality, let's say like that, it's more me than it used to be. But still, for example, in the French one, I'm totally different. I used to really think that I am completely two or three different people when I speak different languages. Because like, for example, in Lithuanian, I felt like I was being able to be more like expressive, very different from how I am in English, you know? And uh, right now, I think because I'm so disconnected from Lithuania, like from where I'm from, that language has no longer an impact on me. So I would say the people that I'm around are mainly <laughs> influencing my personality, you know? Depending how I feel or, or with whom I'm working with, 
I will be switching in different languages. And when I switch languages, I always switch my values because when you speak in a language, you also absorb the culture. So when I speak in English, I'm more American. When I speak in French, I'm more literally African. That's how I create two different characters based on the culture, based on the language, and also on the entourage. To dig a bit deeper, I would think that the culture is bigger catalyst than, than language is. Because um, like cultural differences impact one's personality, of course, or how they present themselves, how they perceive things, how they perceive what you say and interpret and all of that. So That's an excellent question. Um, uh, first of all, I'm the same person, I think, in any language. My character doesn't change, my, my language does. If I go to another country where I'm speaking English, but I know that they're a little bit more formal, then I, you know, I adjust my English accordingly. My personality doesn't change. We need to adapt. We need to use language as a medium and try to communicate and, and, and listen. I think that's the really important part. When you come from Africa or when you come from a former French colony, people expect because you grew up in French, you should be able to at least fit with the language. When I came here, I found out that I was not speaking French for French because I got a strong accent, I was speaking too fast. So you basically open your mouth and start laughing. So I choose not to speak French then because I came too early, I was 14. I also chose not to go to school in French. I didn't want to change my accent. I was telling myself like, the only thing I have linking me to my roots is my accent. So I choose uh, not to lose it. And that was a big barrier for me for a long time because you know it's not easy. When I came to France many years ago, I only looked for French friends. I did not look for American friends. I looked to understand the French, uh, live with the French, eat with the French, become as French as possible. So I wanted to integrate. And I think that's what you have to do to understand the French. It is for sure a strength. I mean, so many more doors open up to you as well. Like both um, career-wise, uh, friend-wise. When I started working, I was a French guy who was not teaching in French. When I came to ISCOM almost like 10 years ago, I spent seven years at ISCOM teaching only English program. Then one teacher got sick and then they asked me to replace the teacher in French for French. I tried and then it went well. And I found that, yes, I'm able to change my voice now because I'm older. I don't care anymore that much, but now I can speak a little bit like a French person if I really have to, but I still don't feel comfortable. After living so long here, and I feel French, um, and people look at me like I'm French, I open my mouth and they know I'm French, which is a huge success for me, you know, when, when you're going to integrate something. And I would have done it probably in, in any country because that's who I am. I want to embrace, I want to integrate, and I want to understand. When I came here, like I said, I had to choose between fit, like changing, and I, and I always told myself my, the, the real freedom is to do what you want, what you need. And I felt like I didn't need to change to be accepted, so I, I became a kind of rebel. So for me, it was a kind of a self-pride, like I'm African, I don't have to be sorry for that. So I said, no, I have to speak like that. So I was trying my best to keep plugging in the culture. So I tried my best to basically not fit in, in terms of language, in terms of language. And I thought it was enough. But the, entire, but the rest of my identity changed. Like I kept the voice, but everything else disappeared. Like the taste, the, the values, the behavior, your ambition, everything else changed because I was only focused on the my, my, my language. I really think it's a barrier if you do not speak the language. It's just, it's just how it is. Like people will look at you differently when you, when you don't speak the language of their country. And so people that speak the same language, they have much easier time to connect. And uh, because it's like part of your comfort zone, you know, like you're just, you're just, uh, yeah, connecting with people that you can easily speak to without even thinking, you know? So it doesn't always have to be a barrier. It depends on how the like 
person feels, you know, because it's actually quite funny. In Italy, once I spent time with, with a person who didn't speak any English and we were just connecting with like writing on Google Translate, showing each other and then with, like body language and stuff. And that was like it, that was like, we were understanding each other to the minimum, but we were still able to like really connect and we kept in touch after, you know? So I think it is a barrier in most cases though, yeah. Actually, it wasn't a barrier because, um, well, as I said, I, I can't speak a bit of French. I speak English, so it wasn't for me. I think it has been kind of a strength because when you're not from here, especially now here we're at university in an international class, so everyone comes and speaks to you. Everyone wants to know like, how do you say this word in Spanish. Then, so it's really, it's really funny. I think people will open up to you more as well when when they when you talk their language because of course like we we have expressions we have um, certain specific words that we tend to use um, and when we have to use those same words in a different language we're a bit like uh, you know like not that comfortable so um, it would like it makes sense why like people speaking the same language connect easier. So it is really, really a strength, especially if you, especially if you plan to stay in the country for, for a long period of time. That's a very good question because it's changed over time. When I first got here, and even as a student, nobody spoke English. Get to this train station, it's all in French. The French people were welcoming, that part is true, but like I said, those because they were also curious, so they were touching my hair, all those things. So it was really, I got, I was fighting all the time because I was pissed. Like I'm not an animal, don't touch my hair. I was spending a lot of hours in the in the gene office because I was, I didn't get it. Like how can you say it's normal for them to make like monkeys voice or whatever stuff or give me banana, bananas? I was like, are you guys serious? I don't come from from the jungle. I come from you know whatever stuff. But so you had to fight with all the stereotype. But as I went on and as France grew and opened up more, now, if you know, at any gal that you go to, there's agents now that speak English. So that helps too. Then when you grow up, okay, you grow up, people also change. Your same friend also changed, also evolved, the travel. I think the young people, your generation, now speak two or three languages. And I think that's a plus, you know, with this Erasmus Plus and, you know, everything that the European Union betted on, they betted on you, the youth. To, you know, to exchange and travel and study. And I think that helped a lot. Before France was much more closed. Um, and when countries are closed and not so open to the world because France has everything, why should they go and look somewhere else? Why should they travel? Not like the Dutch or the Germans. They're, they're always traveling and going and they're curious, I guess. But the French have this, you know, they have it all. In France, it, it always depends on people. I think it really depends on people and uh, where, how comfortable they feel. Um, because, you know, I feel like the people that are interested in like meeting people from other countries or have traveled a lot and have that interest of, you know, like getting out of this comfort zone a bit, I think they are more welcoming. But there are still like people that are more traditional, I would say, and uh, they seem to prefer to stick close to what they already know. Yeah, they they did welcome me very well, I have to say. But uh, I have heard of people that thinks totally different of French people. Most of my friends here, for me, it has been really really okay. I had really fun. I have very good French friends, so for me. Yeah. To be honest, even abroad, French people tend to stick together, which is very unfortunate sometimes. It's very difficult then to connect with them. And that's, again, if you don't speak the language they speak, then they will just be a, cl a cluster together, you know? And uh, you're like, okay, I'm the, I, I don't speak French, so I cannot connect with them. And in France, when you go to order coffee at, at a cafe, even if you're speaking um, English, they will. They seem to always tend to respond in French. You know, they always wanna, at least I don't know, push you to speak French or make you feel like 
like hey you're in france like why are you speaking english or what are you doing here you know it's like this type of feeling to me i ordered flan for a week because i i was so afraid to make a mistake and have them criticize me because i couldn't say anything else no it's true i was younger than you i was i was a teenager at the time and i had to get my courage up to not make a mistake and i knew that you know the french were so hard on you if you didn't at least get it right on pronunciation god when i'm in coffees and stuff i do speak french i try to but um, yeah, people, even if I'm trying to speak uh, French to them to improve, they change completely. In fact, they see I'm not French, which annoys me a bit sometimes, but they do the effort and that it's, I, I appreciate that. Well, in Sweden, sometimes, even when you go to order a coffee and you speak Swedish, but like in a very bad way, they will switch to English. like. They are, they just want to speak English so much in Sweden. That's actually quite crazy. Um, that's, of course, like that's such a benefit to anyone that is coming to visit. You know, it's so easy. Like you can, you don't even have to learn the language. Of course, we talked about the benefits of it, but still. Why should we assume that all French people should speak English? You know, why should we not? And, you know, most Anglophones assume that everybody speaks English, which is wrong. You know, you should at least make the effort. That's what I say. If I go to another country, I want to at least, you know, polite forms of bonjour. And because I feel that's what I have to do when you just get this big smile, you know, it's just wonderful. So being able just to say and make that effort to make a few, you know, little gestures is always appreciated. It's also pride, you know, like language is part of pride of like each country, you know, as a Lithuanian, like if I would meet another foreigner in Lithuania, and they, if they would even know how to say a few words, then I would be like, oh, that's so cool, you know? And I would be like, oh, they're willing to learn the language. That means that they're interested in, you know, connecting with the people from that country. Yeah, um, I think that it's double legit. So if I speak to you in French and I don't, I'm not fluent at all in French, it's easier for me because we are going to have a lot of misunderstandings uh, because of the language. It's easier for me to escape or to avoid the conflict with you because I'm not fluent in French. So it's difficult. It's more difficult, I, I think, to have a real fight with someone that is not speaking the same language as you, at least at first, maybe. It's easier to fairly more conflicts but at the same time, it's easier to avoid In college, I studied international relations. I always wanted to be a diplomat. So for me, a language was, was a tool. And then I went, once my kids were grown, I went to do two more masters in French because I wanted to understand how a conflict is made uh, and how you can get out of it. And obviously language is a terrific medium to communicate. Uh, so if you have, I figure if I have four languages, somebody's gonna speak one of those. Right. Uh, I mean, it can for sure help because um, you're able to explain yourself more um, and uh, the better you're you're capable of using your words uh, to your benefit, you know, then the more the other person can understand your point of view and then you can avoid confusion or misinterpretation, you know. I believe that the most difficult thing in life is communication is the source of all conflict because I believe peace is by default. Conflict comes after communication. Not saying a word can create co conflict. Saying the extra word can create conflict. Missing one word can create conflict. So the, the language is actually a kind of attempt to communicate. I think misunderstandings in general happen mainly because we have literally one way to communicate with each other is verbally then we have like through messages but that's again you use language you know you type but whatever um and third is with like physical body language or or anything but it's still it all still is sort of language you know so non-verbal communication based on culture people will say jokes to you laughing or not laughing so you need to be able to understand the people's culture how they communicate, what laughing means in the culture, and then you can choose how to manipulate the information tools to get what you want.
I believe that people need to create their own identity, like I said at the beginning. And for me, language is just the tool supposed to serve my identity. I will switch. If I feel like being more African will help me. For example, in some high class place, like I go to like high meeting, and I tell myself to Gabriel, they are all PhD, all fancy people. If you come and be another French or American fancy guy, you are nobody. But if you are the black guy from Africa who, who earned the right to be here, you're gonna be an exception. So then I switch. So depending what I need to be in a specific context, I feel really comfortable doing it because when I was a kid, I had to do it by force. Like I was forced to adapt. So over the time, it became part of me. That makes me think instantly of like slang, you know, or like um, village people and city people. They don't, they speak the same language, but they speak it so differently. And sometimes the language you speak can show a lot about where you're coming from, what's your like educational background. You can look a lot more intelligent if you speak the language the right way in a context of like, I don't know, some very fancy event, you would not use curse words because you are presenting yourself as someone intelligent. So really the language that you use will leave an image of you in the other people's eyes. So it's very, it's very important that you are capable of adapting the language to the context you're in. It's also easier to feel the identity of a person in your own language than in any other language. Language is, is a whole. It encompasses culture, it encompasses architecture, and culture's history. There's something that I have adhered to these last almost 40 years that, that I like about. Uh, English is about the same. You know, a person is a complex person, right? I, I have this basis um, that allowed me to grow, and I keep it there as sort of like the foundation of my house. And then on the house is really a French house. But its foundation is American, German, and Ukrainian. And yes, I will change when I feel it's necessary that I can best express myself or best communicate. The language is not just about grammar. The language is about the code, about pronunciation, about your accent, about intonation, about uh, basically how you transcript your emotion. So there are so many things who are attached to a language that just saying I speak French, is a big lie. I do feel like um, more myself in Spanish than in any, any other language I speak. So I do feel like language creates an identity not only because of the language itself, but as a whole. And I right away want to say that I speak four languages and I want that possibility to communicate somebody if it's not in English, it can be in French or German or Italian. So when I start to talk to somebody, I try to understand what their perception is and automatically assume that, you know, you can hear I have an accent in English, um, but I also speak French and I, I, I try to open that door. And so they have the possibility of speaking another language with me. And I am just naturally a person that doesn't want to make anyone feel uh, outside, you know? Or so even if, if for example, now in my student city, if I meet uh, someone that is Lithuanian, I don't instantly jump into a conversation in Lithuanian. Well, I have a friend that is like not speaking the language and is just standing there, you know? So for me, it, it really matters like to include people that I'm with. And so I, then make a choice to speak the most dominant language. Um, but switching between languages is honestly very difficult. But sometimes it's so automatic that I, if I'm not using my rational brain and I'm, and I'm just giving like a random response, sometimes I'm even like, okay, what languages did I actually speak? It just felt like I just spoke up and I'm like, was it English? Was it Lithuanian? Was it Swedish? I'm like, ah, I don't know. <laughs> so it's a funny thing. It's a funny thing. For me, you need to customize what people see of yourself or hear. So if you, con if you control that, then you might have a chance to make sure 
what they hear and interpret is what you want them to to hear if you don't do that you will take a chance it can be right or wrong you need to be in control of the perception of people on your instagram page on your facebook or whatever stuff i always understood myself whatever you post here had to fit with the story you're telling to yourself Definitely, definitely. I think, I'm, you know, understanding, as I said, I'm teaching a, a course on intercultural communications, and I always go back to my own experiences. Um, the fact that we are multifaceted already opens up so much doors culturally. My parents exposed us very early to the Eastern Slavic speaking peoples. And then on my mother's side, we had all the Germanic speaking peoples which not only opened up Germany, but Austria, Swedish, Norwegian, and then I learned French, and then I learned Italian. So this opened up the rest of the part of Europe that I didn't have just from my own home, you know, right? And now I've got all the Latin. So, you know, I remember when I went to Portugal, I spoke Italian to the Portuguese, and they didn't speak English. I would have liked to learn Russian and, and Arabic. So, you know, I would have had at least my sphere, what I would call sphere of influence, uh, already, already covered entirely, but that's a, that'll be for the second life. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, I got to learn so much about so many cultures. Um, here in France, for example, I also lived um, in the UK. So it's really enriching, I think, to be able to see how things are done in another country, um, what, they, what they feel, how they express themselves. Uh, what they they like to do on Sundays. It's so rewarding to to be around international people and broaden your perspective on on the world as well. I learned so much, and right now I think I am very adaptive, so I could like I sometimes feel like I'm a chameleon. So I feel Spanish, of course, but I'm not as Spanish as I used to be, which I like personally. I've noticed myself like I've grown so much since I moved abroad and uh, the fact of meeting just so many like different people from different countries and hearing about people's lives in countries you've never visited or your own culture is so different from theirs like when my friend shares about her life in India I'm like but this is so far away from what I know my Triple culture is also putting triple liabilities. I need to succeed whatever I am, but I also need to succeed according to each culture. For example, in the US, it's all about wealth. You have your big house, you have your big family, a big car, they need to see it. You made it, show it. That part I had for a long time because I was it's part of African culture as well, show off. The European style of success is about your asset. Do you have your kid in good private school? Do you have your insurance? Uh, are you able to literally afford uh, not to work for six months? Like literally, do you have a nanny? Do you like, they have more social kind of security. There's a different kind of success. In the African style, you have to take care of your family. How many cousins and niece depend on you? Do you have a house for your mom in Africa? For your, for your grand, like they have a completely different family Kind of success. And hearing real stories can be such a like eye opener and you really like become more open minded. And when you're more open minded, you're you have a bit of an easier time to continue meeting such people and make them feel like they belong here. Because when you're a foreigner, like you get yourself confused, like where do I belong? Because you're technically from that country, but that country is not where you will live in long term then your friends are from all over the world. They might come back to their hometown, they might not. That's the funny thing. When I had my children, then I found out that I was more African when it came to family, like what they're supposed to do. For example, in Africa, we say that like you have to be clean. It means it's called in French circumcision. Muslim, Christian and African people do it. OK, and normally I didn't care about that stuff when I had a daughter. I didn't even, even know it exists. But when it came to my boys, my wife asked me, like, do you want to do it or not? I said, do what? She said, that because you got to do that. I said, yeah, but when you ask me, it has to happen, right? So, because, so basically, in my head, there are some subjects where you are more one culture than the other one, and you don't even know about it. 
and when you need to decide and take action like into then you even discover yourself uh who you are and this is linked to also your culture your language and the way she brought the question was smart she didn't come to me for, like saying no i don't want them to have it she came like you know it's clean it's important it's, it's useful so she made me feel like if i say i want it she won't say no so i open my big mouth and i say yes actually it's really important if she told me she she doesn't want it it will become a conflict so she choose to find the way to ask me for something i wish for i didn't even know about so that was how smart women are she used words then she told me you know i manipulated you for your goodwill i said thank you love in english but not in french huh? Welcome back, Liga, c'est Daphne. So as you already forgot, there is 274 million people speaking French in the world, and they are not all native, guys. They're trying. We should be more tolerant. It's time to change, Liga, it's time to change. especially creating the concept of special envoyé. I loved filming this part, it was so fun. Yeah, and, uh, personally I was like, it was a very super interesting to put things to perspective and to think about your relationship to language and uh, like go deeper into the reflection and yeah, it was super interesting to see uh, people's interviews and uh, yeah. And you? And for me, it was really, I enjoyed very much seeing how my own opinion was really diverse from other other people's opinion. I think that was really interesting. And you? Yeah, it was really nice to talk about all the interviewed people and they were they looked really happy and doing this interview. <laughs> Even Ellen posted it on her podcast for like fifty five countries uh, all around the world. So that's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Miss Gum. It was cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Enfin, où je me mets. Attends, mais ça flippe du coup. J'avoue, je pose des demi-fesses sur les jambes. Voilà. Un bras fou à 8h du matin. Un bras fou carrément. Ah non, on met pas le roulet. Welcome to Special Angel. Je suis sure about that information. 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 Je ah, oh, okay. je, je, je suis avec les lunettes de soleil. Non, ouais. je sais pas. Non, mais on lance des idées comme ça. C'est marrant, on parle. Je me tire, je Je me tire. Non, mais alors là, c'est vraiment la, la vidéo cringe sur YouTube. Hein. Et ça, ça va se retrouver dans des élèves. Je suis une star. Les frérots, je suis cringe. Les frérots, je suis cringe. Hello, I'm back. Oh, I'm back, bitches. Non, bah, 
Salut. Salut, ça va Salut, Salut, les gars. Ah, Salut, man. les gars. C'est le peu décrit. Là, on est bas. Non, mais arrête. Ah, mais je sais pas comment m'asseoir. Je suis tout sauf à l'aise. Ok, merci. Alors, vraiment, la mauvaise journée, tu vas te faire virer juste après. J'ai l'air d'une grosse malade. Tu sais dans quoi se reconvertir Eh ben ouais. Bah, j'ai une carrière. Tu sais en quoi ne pas se reconvertir T'as pas confiance en, en moi Non. Tu penses que je suis une mauvaise journaliste Je pense. Ok. Oui, ah, il faut yourself. que ça soit drôle. You're funny enough. You can make it. C'est n'importe quoi la vidéo. Ouais. It's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be fascinating. You're gonna be fascinated. By the, this experience of visual and sound. <rire> ça va être mon épreuve de, de concentration. Ah oh, putain, je vais me tromper qu'un soir, vous allez me détester, mais. Allez. Concentration. Non, ok, Daphné pense à des chats sont morts. Sérieux, on pense à des chats morts, encore une fois. Et je pensais à un truc horrible et je me dis c'est pas vrai. Parce que, bref. Non, mais attends. Concentration. J'en ai marre. J'en ai marre. Je me concentre. Je me concentre. Concentration maximale. Groupe comprise. Mais putain, je sais pas parler. Ok. Bah, euh, je sais pas la suite. Trop bien. Je me suis trompée. C'est mmh. parfait. Allez. Euh, et je dis quoi après en fait <rire> Did you know how many people speak French in France Non, du coup. Ah. <rire> Welcome back les gars, c'est Daphné. <rire> là, là, là. <rire> J'adore J'ai envie de m'oublier de parler en anglais. Il est incroyable J'ai <rire> complètement oublié de parler en anglais. Non, je sais pas dire ce mot, donc j'arrête. <rire> non mais j'arrête de faire genre que tu es grave bilingue. <rire> Et après, you je... should make an effort to... Yeah. You should make an effort to quoi To uh, understand them. You should be less shy. Come on, les gars. Well, it's not because they're shy. It's because they're mean. Be nice, no, guys. Say me Treat people French. with kindness. You should say... Oh. You should be less méchant. Les gars, it's time to chill. <laughs> comme ça. <laughs> non. Je peux te baisser comme ça, si je te regarde et là, je regarde les caméras. Oh. <rire> L'intérêt à nous mettre une bête de note, hein, parce que là, l'implication qu'on a mis là-dedans. I love you, Gabriel.